profanity. Okay, children. Now, even though we didn't have time to go through the process of cleaning these plates up, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate. Let's see. Let's give Miss Napier a helmet. You don't have to put it on your head, but you can just look through the lens. Uh, that's what's a good idea is when you're getting ready to tack weld this up and you don't have the plates together, you want to go ahead and Go ahead and tack weld our plate, our bottom plate. We we'll go ahead and tack weld our bottom plate to the platform, and then that'll hold it while we put the other plate on it. Okay. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Yep. yep. Contact. We'll just put a slight tack weld on there, and that'll hold that plate in place while we set this plate up to weld. Now, if you want to really uh, be sure to get this straight, you take a marker or a piece of chalk and line it up where it's going to be sitting on the plate. Put your two lines there to show where you can set the plate up in the middle, and then you can tack it together. I'd advise you to tack it on each end first and then check it and see if it's square. Ready? Now if you tack it on the end, tack it right here on the end, that don't really give it a place to, to pull from. So it won't pull to the side. It's going to try to maybe pull this way, but it won't be able to. And you've got a little bit of control. You can actually bend that tack and get that plate in line. Look down the top of it there and see if it's a 90 degree angle. This one looks pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and tack it on this end. Remember what I said about controlling distortion? To control distortion, you want to put a tack weld on either side of the plate, both sides. And you want to do it at the end of the weld. You don't want to have it in the middle, in the beginning, necessarily. It doesn't really matter, but if you put it at the end, you won't, it won't interfere with you starting your weld when you turn the plate around. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm going to weld it on this end, because that's going to be the end of the weld when I turn the plate around. So I'm going to put a little tack weld back here on this side. Everybody ready? Yep. yep. Well, Rod. Do the same thing on this side at the end of the plate. Now that you got two beads, small tacks on each side of the plate, that's going to prevent it from trying to roll as you weld this whole bead. When you run this bead down through here, this plate, both plates are going to get very hot right at this seam. Since you're welding on this one side, it's going to try to pull that together as the metal cools down. It's going to try to roll it up. But your tack welds will hold it on the other side. Now, if this was a, you know, this is the way you need to treat it as if it's some kind of a major project, even though it's just a little T-joint. You treat it the same if it was a, if it was on some kind of nuclear power plant, okay? Now, we're ready to weld our bead. Let's make sure we've got our slag chipped. Got a slag hammer? Chip and hammer? Good job. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, make sure where you start at, you got it chipped off and cleaned off. Now you see the mill scale, that gray material there needs to be cleaned off where you're going to go through the weld zone. Now I'd like for everybody to watch this. I'd like for everybody to watch this and see how I lay this bead in there. And so then you'll know when you go start melting, this is the angle I need to be at. This is how I need to hold the the rod and this is how fast it needs to go. That's why I wanted to give you this demonstration. 
and then if I make a mistake, we're just going to stop the video and start over. Remember, a grinder is the welder's best friend. They can cover a multitude of sins. You can, uh, if you make a bad weld, you can grind it off and start over again. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. If you'll notice, you have a weld pool. Everybody that can see this, you see a weld pool right behind the electrode. Where that weld pool goes is where your weld's going to be stable. So if you see that weld pool's not going equally up on both plates, then you can manipulate it. You can move it. Now this, this plate has actually got a little gap in it, so I'm going to be facing a gap that I'm going to have to fill in. You might see a little motion in that weld rod. You see that? This is another demonstration of how far you need to take your... You need to burn your welding rods up as much as possible without burning the electrode holder. Use them all up. To the numbers. At least to the numbers, yes. Now before we restart, we need to chip the slag. Why do we need to chip the slag off before we restart? Put porosity in it. Right. Wormholes and whatnot. Wormholes, everything. So as long as we got a little spot cleaned off where we're going to start back, we're good. Actually, I need a little more amperage. What are we on right there? Take it up to about 119. 120. I'm actually welding 3 8 inch steel. I told you quarter inch. This happened to be 3 8 so I'm a little too close. I want a good penetration here, okay? Everybody ready? Yep, yep. Got the slag coming out of the old well there. Anybody see that? Yes. There was a well right in the middle of that plate. And when I burned into it, there was some slag inside the well that started pouring out. You see that well pool right behind my weld rod? That liquid metal? Yep. That's what you want to control. That's where you want to move and put it on the right spot on the plate. And just after you're gone, it's going to be hard and fair for it. Somebody get the ventilation for me. The one in my office. Okay, now, here's another little tip I want you to remember. When you get to the end of the weld, a lot of times that the leftover part there is at the end is going to be a little crater. It actually leave a small, it could leave a small opening, a gap there. So when you get to the very end of the plate, hesitate there for a minute and let it build up. Because you've been cutting out as you come up to it. Hesitate there, and sometimes you might can even go back a little bit just to make sure that the end of it is welded all the way up. I don't like to see the welds run out at the end and not cover the plate. I don't like to see that in the beginning either. I like to see you start at the very edge and run it all the way through till you run off the plate. that connects, go ahead and turn that welder off for me next time. We're looking for a bead that connects to both plates equally. Without overlap and without undercut. That's what we're looking for. So that's a demonstration. <laughs> 
Do you think that looks okay? Yeah, it looks good to paint on. <laughs> you can see, can anybody tell the difference? We turned up the amperage about middle ways. Can you see a difference in the way the metal lays in the first part of the bead compared to the way it laid in the last part? Yeah, yeah, the ripple more. Yeah, a little smoother ripples, ain't it? So this was a lot better penetration, a lot better weld. It looks like it burned in real good. Okay, that's how you're supposed to do it. So go get you two plates, cut them out, and I want you to do the very same thing, okay? Thank you, Teresa.